Hi everyone, this is Laura Hammock from the Marble Jar channel, and in today's video I'll tell you how I read and take notes on nonfiction books. This method helps me read faster, retain more information, understand the topic better, and it gives me notes to come back to later. So how do you read nonfiction? Do you read one page at a time starting at the beginning the way that you would read fiction? If so, you are probably doing it wrong. I wish I could find the article that I read many years ago that changed my thinking on this. But generally speaking, the point of fiction is to entertain and transport, to tell a story. Also, generally speaking, the point of nonfiction is to convince you of something, present a perspective, or educate you. Now, in some cases, you will be reading nonfiction for enjoyment, like a, a memoir or history, in which case, use your best judgment and read how you want. But again, generally speaking, the purposes of fiction and nonfiction are different, so the way that you approach them should also be different. So here's what you need to take away from nonfiction. Who wrote it, the point the author was trying to make, the way the author chose to make that point, and his or her best arguments or concepts. When I'm reading fiction, because it's generally for enjoyment, it doesn't matter whether I retain the storyline or the names of the main characters. But when I'm reading nonfiction, I would really like to remember those basic takeaways that I just mentioned. So I almost always take notes. So my note-taking app of choice is Evernote. I have lots of videos on how I use Evernote, but for the purposes of this video, I have a notebook called Books and Reading, which is where I capture notes for the books that I read. Okay, so there is an ideal way to take notes, which I'll cover in a moment. And then there are some lazy ways, which I will share now. Lazy notes method number one. So let's say I read kind of a throwaway book that was okay, but I don't feel like I need to spend a ton of time summarizing it. In this case, I may just write a two to three sentence summary as my notes for the entire book. Or even lazier, I may just copy the summary from Amazon or from an online review. No need to spend a ton of time memorializing a book that didn't have much to say to you. Lazy notes method number two. So the other lazy way that I sometimes take notes is that I highlight passages as I'm reading, and then I just export those highlights into a note. This works particularly well for books that I am reading on a Kindle. So I have a video on doing this from Kindle if you are interested. Sometimes I'll go a step farther and I will structure those passages as bullets under the chapter headings, or sometimes I just leave them as is. I definitely do this for textbooks where I have a ton of highlights, or if the book has particularly beautiful writing that I want to capture. Okay, so those are my two lazy methods. Now let me tell you about my ideal note-taking method. So there are a bunch of steps, which I will cover one at a time. Here are the steps. Read a summary, research author, read introduction, write own summary, record the book structure, skim and take notes and summarize chapters, export your highlights, review your initial summary and revise, and reread notes. So let's take these one at a time. First, read a summary. So this is the quickest task. This should take less than five minutes. Read a summary of the book online, like on Amazon, or the first paragraph of Wikipedia if it has an entry. Make sure this is not a review. You don't want to bias yourself before reading, nor a detailed summary, which is why you should just read the first paragraph of the Wikipedia entry. So just a quick paragraph on what this book is about. Next, research the author. So this is also really quick. Don't research like you are writing a biography. You just want to figure out what their education and credentials are, what they have written before, and how their background might influence their argument. So for example, I read a book on our society's relationship to money, and I found that the author was a philanthropic fundraiser. She also pointed this out in the book, but it was crucial for me to know what her background was to understand how her perspective may be different than if she was, say, a financial advisor or a psychologist. So once you've done those two bits of background research, it's time to read the introduction. Sometimes the book doesn't have an introduction, in which case the first chapter generally provides this function. You can read this all the way through, but in my experience, introductions are usually made up of two parts, a humanizing personal anecdote and an actual introduction to the book. The introduction part is what you're after. Not bad to read the personal anecdote. It usually adds to the research that you already did on the author. But what you really want is the author's explanation of what the book is about and how the book is going to be structured. So based on this information, you will now write a summary. So does it seem premature? Um, it shouldn't be. After reading the intro, you should be able to write two to three sentences on what the book will be about and what topics or arguments will be covered. I find that writing the summary at this point helps me to ensure that I have gotten what I need out of the introduction. Now, record the book structure. 
So authors have a lot of decisions to make. Potentially the most important decision is how they are going to structure their argument so that it has the most impact on their reader. So this structure should not be a mystery. It should be obvious to help the reader navigate the book and navigate their arguments. The book structure is made obvious by the use of chapter titles, headings, and subheadings. I record everything accessible to me in this table of contents. If the author decided to put subheadings in the table of contents, great. I happily record those as well. This gives me the best understanding of how the author is going to make his or her case. Confession. I do not love the busy work of retyping out the entire table of contents. This is one area where I almost always use a photo to text app. I happen to like text grabber for this. The character recognition is good, but it's not perfect. But even if I have to do some light editing, it saves me time over retyping. So then I put in my own structure by using bullets under chapter headings for subcategories. Okay, so now I am ready to skim and take notes and summarize chapters. So you may be annoyed that we have done all of this work and we haven't even started reading yet, right? But I'm telling you, by doing all of this prep work, you already have a better sense of how the book is structured, the point the author is going to make, and how he or she will make it than if you have had read the book cover to cover. Okay, so now we are reading, but we don't have to read that closely to get the gist of the section, do we? So I use the sections that are provided by the author in the form of subcategories, and I make notes for each one. You are looking for main points and main arguments. Along with this will be explanations of studies, examples, backup data, anecdotes, some of which will be really interesting or important to your understanding. So dip in and out of the text to get a sense of the point of the section and what data the author is using to support those assertions. So I can't tell you exactly how to skim, but I tend to read diagonally looking for important pieces of information. Another way is to read the first two sentences of every paragraph to determine whether the whole paragraph is worth reading. For each section, I write a summary if needed, sometimes the title of the section is enough, and any pieces of uh, interesting data that I've picked up from the section. So then I move to the next. This should be faster than reading every word. To give you a sense, I read fiction for enjoyment approximately one page, um, one minute per page, give or take. So under 60 pages an hour. Nonfiction is generally denser and less enjoyable reading, so it takes me longer, maybe 30 to 40 pages an hour. Using this structured skim technique, I can skim and take notes on about 90 pages per hour if I'm really concentrating. Plus, I retain a lot more afterwards. Obviously, some books you'll want to read more slowly, and some books you can just fly through. It really depends on how you want to engage with, with the information. So as you go, highlight passages that are particularly interesting or well said. When you're finished, feel free to export your highlights and paste them either at the bottom of your notes or if you're particularly ambitious, you can insert them into the relevant section of your notes. Okay, so once you've completed the book, go back and revise your initial summary. So remember that summary that you wrote after the introduction? Now that you've skimmed slash read the whole book, go back and revise that summary if you need to. Most of the time you'll be surprised to find that you don't need to revise it. Just reading the introduction gave you enough information to write a fairly robust summary of the book. And finally, reread your notes. You do not need to do this right away. After all, you're probably sick and tired of the topic at this point. But in a week or two, go back and read through your notes. It will help your memory retention and it will help to cement those concepts in your brain. So this may seem like a ridiculously long process to you, but for me, it dramatically increases the speed with which I can read nonfiction. It helps me understand the author's points and intentions better, and it gives me a set of notes that I can consult later on this topic. Let me know what you think. Comments are always appreciated, and thanks for watching.